So in this recording, we will go through the last but one um, section in our Python for Beginners course, which is object-oriented programming. That is what we will complete. And then for the final section, I will share a uh, application uh, problem uh, and a problem to, to solve or to develop a practical application. And if uh, people are interested, they can complete it and share the uh, code and how uh, solve the problem with me later on. So my <clears throat> idea is before uh, I enter into the new year to complete the uh, Python for Beginners course. So with, uh, without further ado, let us go to the oops section of the Python for Beginners uh, course. First, we'll understand some uh, theory and then we will look at code to concretize uh, the understanding of the concepts. So what is object-oriented programming? So object-oriented programming also in, in short, also known as uh, OOP, oops, right, is a programming paradigm that models real world entities as objects. So think about um, uh, like objects as, as a uh, instance of uh, a blueprint, which is called class. If I have to give an example, think uh, of uh, animal as a blueprint, animal as the class and humans are an object of the animal class. Similarly, animals like cow is an object of the animal class. Lion is an object of an animal class, right? So in the oops programming paradigm, class is kind of your blueprint. And the object is an is a particular instance of that class. And OOPS promotes modularity, reusability, and maintainability in software development. We'll understand this uh, more when we uh, look at the code and see how classes and objects are uh, coded in Python. Right? But in, in a nutshell, um, the two important terms in OOPs are class and object. Class is the blueprint. Object is the actual implementation of that class, actual instance of that class. Example is animal is a class. Human is an object of animal class. Cow is an object of uh, animal class. Lion is an object of animal class. There are certain concepts in OOPs again. Um, so which are like, there are three uh, main concepts uh, which makes the code more secure and modular, right? So those concepts are encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. We'll look at an example of each of these three concepts um, through a Python code, how we implement these concepts. Think about encapsulation is where you bundle the data and methods that the class or the object operates on, right, um, in a single unit. So that is called class. So when, so encapsulation is how the properties of the class or the behavior of the class or the methods of the class and the data on which those a data which those methods access and encapsulation is the concept of bundling this together into a class. And if it is not clear, just hold on to this thought. We'll uh, go to the code and it will, it will be more clear then. Inheritance is creating new classes by inheriting properties and behaviors from an existing class. So what have we learned about class earlier? We said that class is a blueprint, right? Now I can have a another 
subclass which inherits a parent class. To give an example, let's say, um, let me take a good example. So let's say, uh, let's say that uh, vehicle is a class, right? Now a vehicle class, if, if that is my parent class, I can create a child class called car, which is, which can inherit the behavior of the behavior, uh, vehicle class and probably and, and extend some more, which extend some more behaviors which are specific to the car. Right? For example, a vehicle, vehicle um, moves, right? A, a, a vehicle you can drive, right? So I can inherit the driving behavior from the vehicle, vehicle to the car. But at the same time, the car has, um, let's say, um, brakes, right? I can put brakes in the car. Right. So that that is, let's say, if it's that is a, a specific behavior of the car, I'll uh, add that into the car class, which is a child class, but it inherits from vehicle the driving behavior. Another uh, subclass can be a aeroplane, right? The aeroplane is also a vehicle. So its parent class can be vehicle, but aeroplane can put additional behavior, which can be the method to fly, right? So that is the inheritance, right? You inherit from a parent class and uh, into the child class. Same as um, how uh, real world objects or uh, real world also works, right? So, uh, Think about uh, father and son, right? The father is the parent class. The son is the child class. The son might inherit some properties of the father. For example, if the father has blue eyes, the son may have blue eyes, but the son might uh, like it inherited the blue eyes, plus it can have additional behavior uh, for example, uh, he has uh, six fingers, right? So that can be an additional uh, property or behavior in the son, but it inherits certain properties from the father. Right? The third concept is polymorphism. The polymorphism, the by the term it means poly means many, morph means form. So the uh, usual the definition of polymorphism and when we see an example it will be more clear is the ability to use objects of different classes through a common interface right this probably is not very clear to give an example let's take a example of uh, car and aeroplane both inherited from the vehicle class and the vehicle class has a uh, behavior and method called move. Now, when a car moves, the car moves on the street, right? So the although the behavior name is move, it takes different form when it comes to car versus the aeroplane. When the car moves, it moves on the street. When the aeroplane moves, it moves in the air, right? That's a uh, example of polymorphism and will when we see the example, it will be more clear. <clears throat> Again, um, the last part here, it, it's we already uh, went through. A class is a blueprint for creating object. It defines attributes and methods. Attribute is the data. Method is the behavior or uh, the behavior or the method that uh, which operates on the data or the attribute or the properties, right? There is, these are different names. An object is an instance of a class representing a real world entity. Example, car with attributes, color and uh, brand or properties and methods start and stop, right? Right, these are the methods, right? And uh, 
encapsulation, it probably will be clear now. When I create the class car, the attributes and the methods, I encapsulated, encapsulate within the class car. Let's see some examples now that will make this, this concepts that we have learned theoretical now more com, uh, concrete, right? Let me go to Python. Right? We'll create a class first, right? So this is an example, and then I'll make these examples available in my Git. I'm creating a, a car class now. So in Python, to create a class, you should always start with this keyword here. C is in small letter, class, name of the class, class car. The init function is similar to, if you are from a Java background, it is similar to the constructor uh, concept, right? So when you, when you uh, initially, or, or when you instantiate a class or car here, when you try to instantiate it, this will automatically execute this function. So this, so any methods are created using the def keyword, right? So these are, these are the methods. These are the methods that we have created. And the underscore, underscore init, underscore, underscore, that is the, like a constructor. Whenever you construct an object of the car, this is the first thing that it will execute. So usually in constructor, you put logic that you want to um, use as part of an initialization of, of an uh, object, right? For example, here, when I create a instance of car, I'll uh, pass the color and brand brand to that instance, and that will become the data or the attributes of that uh, car class, right? So this is this is the uh, um, class car, right? Where I have three methods, right? Start method. Um, okay, so let me first comment this. I'll explain this later. What underscore underscore means, right? First we'll without the underscore underscore, we'll understand it. And then we'll um, go to the underscore underscore part, right? So we have uh, two methods, start method, stop method, and there are two attributes, color and brand, right? This is the interface. This is the, my blueprint the of car class. Now I create an instance of the class car, right? So I can, so I, uh, so when I say instance, instance is something that I will be able to now touch, right? For example, my car, my wife's car, I can, I, I can, those are tangible, right? I can touch them, right? So my car is now, I'm creating the an instance of uh, the class car, which is my car, which is red in color and Toyota. Right, that this my car is an object of class car, right? With the attribute color attribute is red, and brand attribute is Toyota. My wife's car is also a instance of car class, but the attributes are color is white and brand is Hyundai, right? And I can now. Um, execute the methods, the methods that I have, the method and the attributes that I have encapsulated in the car, I can now use these methods on my instance of the car, right? As well as my wife's car. So let, let us run this. So my car equal to car, red Toyota, my car dot start, it will execute this function and will print the color and the brand, right? And then when I say stop, it will say the uh, color and the brand is stopping, right? So let me run this. So my car start, red Toyota is starting because that is red Toyota. My car is an instance of car with red and Toyota. Red Toyota is stopping, right? This, this two are printed here. And then my wife's car, which is a white Hyundai, are printed here. White Hyundai is starting, white Hyundai is stopping, right? Okay. 
Now, similar to Java, in Python also, we have private and protected uh, methods, right? So, for example, if I want to, if I want to use a protected method, I start the name of that method with underscore, with a single underscore. And it is true for attributes also. I can do a self dot underscore color. That means these are protected attributes or protected methods. Protected attributes or protected methods are uh, like are recommended to be used within the class. You don't want to access them from outside the class. If you want, you can. It does not stop you for protected class. But you would not like to access those protected class outside of the class itself. For example, here, this is my public class, but the public class is calling the protected class, which is underscore start. I would not try to directly say my car dot um, underscore start, right? Although it does not stop you, protected class does not stop you from accessing a protected class or protected attribute, but this is not recommended. This is protected class is used to tell the developers like who might want to use this class uh, to extend uh, it, right? That, okay, this, this is a protected class. This is used internally. So be careful if you want to use it externally. Recommendation is not, you should not uh, use it externally. But if there are ways, if there are uh, reasons to use uh, it externally, be aware that it's a protected class. Right. So with protected class, I if I say my car dot start. So here this is a public class. Public class now internally will call the protected class, and it will give me the same uh, response because uh, the same logic I have put in the protected class also. The other type of uh, method or attribute is called uh, private. Right. So private is where I put double quotes. Uh, sorry, double underscore. Double underscore, you will not be able to access this outside of the class. For example, if I do my dot car underscore underscore star, it says it, it cannot find this, right? And if I run this, you will see for this one, it will say car has no attribute underscore underscore start, right? So when you do a underscore underscore method within the class, that method will be accessible only from the class. Uh, okay, I'll. it is not 100% correct. I'll say how you can access it and you should not. But <clears throat> ideally, if I just say my car dot underscore underscore start, it will not work, right? Now, what happens when you create a private class like this? There is something called name mangling. Name mangling happens. What it does is, it changes the Python changes the name to the underscore underscore start to the name of the class which is car and then it basically prefixes this variable with the name of the class. So if so I said like you cannot access a private class, it is not hundred percent true. If I say my car dot underscore underscore start, yes, I cannot. But if I say my car dot underscore uh, underscore car, which is the name of the class, underscore underscore start, I can access it. If I run this, it will work. Right? This is called name mangling. You should not do this. You should not access uh, like this, right? Because um, this is not recommended. The name mangling happens so that you don't inadvertently uh, um, use the start uh, class, right? So ideally, private classes are used internally. Even protected classes are used internally. Protected class, you can still access uh, outside the class, but is not recommended. That is an, uh, the reason for having protected class is to warn the developers that, yes, this is an internal class. 
if you want to really wanted to access it outside the class, be ever that is an internal, uh, it is intended to use for internal, be aware of that. If you use uh, private class with underscore underscore, you will not even be able to access it by just saying dot underscore underscore start. But yeah, if you uh, like tweak it like this, which is not recommended, if you use a mangled name, you can do it, right? So this is about classes and objects, right? Now, in the next example, we'll learn about instance attributes and class attributes, right? So instant attributes are the ones that is um, at the instance level, at the object level. And the class attributes are at the um, class level, right? So for example, in this, uh, like when I create a class called car, when I say year equal to 2012, outside any methods within the car, this becomes my class attribute. Any attribute that I define within the method, right, that becomes an instance attribute, right? The other thing uh, that I did not uh, explain when I uh, was talking about class and object is the self, right? This self is like, is a is object itself right so when you when you create a object from a class that object instance is accessible through this self parameter right so self dot color self dot brand that is the instance variable that's it these are all instance variable but this is a class variable right so for example in this one i have the class here as a class variable also as an instance variable also here right and just uh, I'll just make it here, here, right? So now, when I create the car one instance of car, I pass the color, which is red, brand, and this car is 2015. I create another instance of car, which is car two, color, brand, and here, right? And uh, then if I print now the attributes. If I say print car one color equal to car one dot color. So I'm talking about the instance variable, which is red here. Car two dot color, the instance variable, the variable of the car two instance blue, right? It will be blue, right? But if I, if, uh, right? But if I say print car dot year, this is the class variable, right? It will print this. If I say car one dot year, it will print 2015. If I say car two dot year, it will print 2014, right? So this is the instance variable. This is the class variable. Let me run this. So if you see car one, color equal to car one dot color, which is the instance variable, car one dot brand, Toyota instance variable. For car two, car two dot color is blue, car two dot brand is Honda. These are instance variable. Car dot year, it printed me 2012. Car dot year, that is a class variable. Car one dot year and car two dot year are again the instance variable, right? This is the difference between instance and class attributes. Okay, let's, uh, so this example is to show the methods which we already have seen, right? So this is a class um, methods. We start with def, right? There is a start method and a stop method. And when you create an instance of uh, uh, an object from the class, for my car is the object, right? Instance of car, I can do a my car dot start or my car dot stop, right? Uh, the next example is um, again uh, creating object. Right? So this just I gave some more examples of like how to create objects out of classes, right? I'll skip this because we have spoken about a lot uh, before. Now let's talk about inheritance. What is inheritance? If you remember inheritance, we said that there is a parent class and there is a child class. For example, if ve vehicle is my parent class, like that vehicle is my parent class and I, as part of vehicle, I have color brand, right? As the instance uh, variable. I have two methods start. The stop method, I did not implement in the vehicle class, right? I said pass. 
I implemented the start method, right? So now, if this is my parent class, I can create a child class called car by passing the parent class here. And this is how I'm inheriting all the attributes, all the methods of vehicle in my child class. And the only thing I'm doing is now implementing the stop method in my car class because I have already inherited this from my vehicle class, right? So if I, um, if I now create an instance of from my child class, which is a car and say red Toyota, if I say my car dot start, my car dot start will use the method from my parent class, but my car dot stop will use the implementation that I have done is done in uh, the car class, right? This actually is a over, this is also method overriding, right? So I could actually make, could have made it, if I would have said abstract class here, right? Uh, abstract. Self of vehicle stuff, why it is not doing it? Abstract class. Abstract class. Unresolved abstract class. Do the CVC. Right, and I should have uh, unresolved class, abstract class. Uh, at oh, ab sorry, abstract method, abstract method, right? So when I say uh, abstract, uh, okay, the abstract method. So when I say abstract method, that means it's similar to Java abstract uh, uh, methods, right? Where I'm saying that I am not implementing this method in this class. I would like to have my own implementation when I create an instance of this class by inheriting this vehicle class, right? When I say abstract method, you will be forced to implement this method when you instantiate an object from the class, right? So I just also wanted to let you know how to create an abstract method, right? And this is an example of uh, method overriding also, right? So here I have the name of the method, but the actual behavior of that method is when I um, uh, create the, uh, when I inherit uh, into the child class, I actually write the logic or the behavior of that method, right? Um, you might want this because uh, like if you want to um, have a same name of a method, but the behavior changes uh, depending on uh, what objects you are creating, right? For example, if I create a uh, aeroplane class here, uh, the stop method may be uh, different, right? So that is where uh, this abstract method and method overriding comes into picture, right? So now what I have done is I have uh, created a instance of my car from the class car. Uh, since I since car uh, inherits from vehicle, the start method uh, would be is already implemented in vehicle. It will take it from start, but the stop method we have overridden in the car class and it will use uh, the logic of the stop method from the car class. So if I say my car dot start, right, it will say red Toyota is starting. This is taking it from the inherited method here. But when I say stop, right, it is the overridden method from the uh, car, right? So this is, uh, we understood inheritance. Uh, uh, now, polymorphism actually, while doing inheritance, we did uh, polymorphism and uh, kind of uh, method overriding also, but okay, let's understand polymorphism now, right? 
So poly means many morphins form, which means I can have different objects of a class, but the object will respond to the same method in different ways. For example, the method of eating in human is eat cooked food, the same eat method for cow means eat grass, right? So let's look at this. So I have a class animal. I have an extract method called eat. Now this method will have different forms based on what object I create. If I create a human object, the same name, the same method will take the form of eating cooked food. If I create a class cow inheriting from animal, my method of eating will be eating grass, right? This is polymorphism. The same name, same name, but many forms, right? And that is what is, means that the method the object will respond to the same method, same name method in different ways, right? So when I create a, a human object, it will be eating cooked food. When I create a cow object, it will be eating grass, right? So if the name of my cow is Budhya, Budhya is the name of the cow, and uh, Budhya is an instance of the cow class, and Rajiv is the person, me, I am a class of human, Right, and when I uh, so uh, I put it into a list, both these objects, and for each of them, if I call the eat method now, for Budhya, it will be the behavior of this method would be eating grass. For Rajiv, it will be eating cooked food. If I run this, right, for Budhya, eat grass. For Rajiv, eat cooked food. The same method taking different forms. Right, this is the polymorphism concept of uh, oops. Method overriding, right? Method overriding is, let's say I have a class vehicle. I have a start uh, method already. Let's say I have a start method already in the vehicle class. But when I inherit the vehicle class in my child class called car, I override this method and put something, a different logic, right? This is overriding, right? I'm overriding the method in my child class, right? So when I create a my car instance, if I say my car dot start, now it will not execute the logic of the vehicle of the inherited classes method. It will exec execute whatever I have overridden in my child class, right? My car dot start, right? If I run this, it will say car is starting. Now, if I want the vehicle class, I'll have to say my car dot class, right? The class of that my car dot start. I should be, this, this will give me the vehicle class. Uh, oops, missing one parameter, which is a name. Got to, let's say vehicle. Oops. Uh, Dot. Okay, um, I, I know what, so this would be vehicle, which is the class. Start. Okay, vehicle also needs a name. Oops. Right, so uh, this is because Vehicle, right? If you see the init method, it takes uh, name as a variable, right? So vehicle is a class. So this, if I want the class uh, method to run, I'll have to use class dot start. But when I say my car dot start, the overridden method, right? The logic of the overridden method, it will be executed, right? This is the concept of method overriding. So that's all that I wanted to uh, discuss on uh, the oops concepts and class and uh, object concepts within Python. Please go through this, try out this uh, examples. And uh, in my next recording, I am going to share a um, share a, a problem statement to, to create an uh, application in Python using all the concepts that we have learned so far. Thank you, bye-bye.